Good morning. We are so glad that you made the decision to join us this special, this Sunday morning. Uh, would you join me in our opening hymn? There is a fountain filled with blood. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is great to see you today. I appreciate very much your faithfulness, and, and we can't participate in person, but we are grateful that you participate in watching us online. Uh, we want to welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We hope that you feel welcome because you are, that you belong because you do, and there's a place here for you because there is, and that God has a plan and a purpose for your life because he does. I want to just take a moment or two to make some announcements, and I appreciate very much your paying attention to the announcements. The, the primary thing I want to share with you today is that we will celebrate the National Day of Prayer service here at 12 o'clock noon. That's Eastern Time this coming Thursday. It's next Thursday, 12 o'clock noon, Eastern Time, the National Day of Prayer service. Uh, we typically will do that service in conjunction with the Lee the Russell Ministerial Association uh, and our prayer ministry here at the church. But we've had to truncate um, the service somewhat because of social distancing and and, south, and the size of uh, of gatherings. And so we're going to pretty much have to do it in in house this year. We do we do have one other uh, pastor is going to join me as well. Uh, but we encourage your attention to that if you'd like to join us. Our National Day of Prayer service will be praying with seven areas of prayer concerning our, our nation and the world and uh, institutions so that we invite you to join us at 12 o'clock noon this coming Thursday. I'm grateful for your participation. I'm so grateful for your faithfulness and in, 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 in joining us in this service online. One of the things that's so exciting about it is I'm hearing from people that I haven't heard from in years. Um, one of the things we've been blessed with, Lisa, Jane, and myself have been blessed with in the ministry of serving some of the finest folks in all of Methodism and all of the Christian church. Uh, we've served 15 churches, um, not because we couldn't find one we'd like, but because, uh, to be honest with you, we have a rotation system as far as appointments, and, uh, and I've never been to a church that, that, it, that I wanted to leave, to be honest with you. We've served some wonderful churches in places like Pittsview and Hatchet and Jernigan and Uchi and places we began there. Then we went on to, to White Oak and Liberty, served also um, an interdenominational church at uh, uh, Chapel by the Lake uh, in, in the Eufaula area. Then we went to Frisco City and, and went to uh, Mexia, Frisco City and Mexia. I went from there to Sarah Land. And after we left Sarah Land United Methodist Church, we went to Moundville. We served Moundville and Stewart and and the uh, and the um, 
And then there was also a China Grove Church out in the woods uh, that even the district superintendent didn't know about, know about at the time. And then uh, we went from there to the Panama City Beach uh, where we served Gulfview United Methodist Church, uh, suffering for the Lord down there on the beach. And then the, the bishop uh, moved us here to my hometown at Epworth United Methodist Church, and we've been here about 12 years. It is so great to hear and see these comments made by people in our former churches. We thank you for your faithfulness. It's great to uh, talk with you by phone. It's great to talk with you um, and um, on, online. We appreciate very much your presence. We're going to continue to worship God. We want to remind you today that we're going to celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And uh, if you haven't already gotten your elements, your uh, grape juice and your uh, bread and, and crackers in front of you, you might want to go ahead and do that now. And so having said that, we're going to continue to worship God by spending some time praising him in song. Join me in our hymn of praise this morning, Break Thou the Bread of Life. unite together this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in life everlasting. Amen.
You know, I, I realized as we uh, started the service this morning that uh, when I was rehearsing in the back in the choir room, that it, when, when it was time to come up, I had two CDs laying there. So I just picked up a CD uh, case and I brought it in and I, or I brought it in and handed it to Keith. And I thought about it as we started, I sure hope I grabbed the right CD. So if I did, if I did I'll do these words to whichever song comes on. But it's uh, hopefully it's Remember Me. Wow, Kevin, thank you so much. What a great blessing. 
We sing a lot of my favorite songs around here. I think every week I've got a, a, another favorite song, and that is without a doubt one of my favorite songs that Kevin has uh, presented uh, through the years that I've been here. And I thank him so much. That was a great, great, great song. I, love, I appreciate it so much. Um, we're really uh, blessed with the music ministry here at the Effort United Methodist Church. And um, we're blessed in, blessed in a lot of ways, frankly. Uh, we thank you so much for your faithfulness. Um, uh, you heard Christina playing the offertory. Um, and the fact is, we've had, I had somebody over in West Alabama sent me a text, me, uh, email, as a matter of fact, and called me later on during the week, and they told me, and said, uh, we really enjoy hearing your pen is played. And I said, well, I'll tell you about that. I said, I taught her everything she knows. But actually, the truth of the matter is, uh, if she listened to me what I know about piano, she wouldn't be able to play at all. She does a great job, and we're blessed by her ministry and music. And, and then Kevin comes along and sings a song like that, and it's just really, really hard uh, not to get excited and, and jump up and down. We have an empty sanctuary, uh, but our hearts are full in these worship services. We thank you for your presence and being here. We're grateful also the way you have financially supported this church. Uh, you've been so good and so faithful in remembering uh, the church and your and your tithes and offerings. And uh, you continue to give online as you have. You can go to our website and it'll give you instructions on how you can give online. Uh, you've done a great job with that. We thank you also for mailing those checks in at P.O. Box 430, Phoenix City, Alabama, uh, 36867 or 36868. Um, either one will work. And we thank you for doing that. You've been so very faithful, and I just want to compliment you on that. Um, I was tempted sometimes to just to tell you to, to send it in to, and make your checks out to the pastor's slush fund, but I don't think the finance committee would let me get away with that. And I know the bishop wouldn't, but uh, you make those checks out to Elf Earth United Methodist Church, and there will be five. You can mail them in like that. Thank you so much. You have been so, so very faithful, and I appreciate your uh, the way you just... You've just um, stepped up and done a wonderful job, and God has put on your heart to continue to support this church because we still have continued expenses. I want to spend some time in the Word of God with you today. I want to remind you that we will, in fact, be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion in, in just a few moments. Uh, if you haven't already got your grape juice and your bread or crackers in front of you, you might want to go ahead and do that now. But I want to spend some time with you in the Word of God first and I want to listen to these. I ask you to listen carefully because this is the reading of God's holy. It is His inspired and His inerrant word. And that's reason enough to listen carefully. But especially in these days, in these times, in these trying times, we, we find these kind of verses like this are truly, truly, truly encouraging. Uh, there are three very short verses. You find them in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, and I'm going to be reading for the New International Version. And I want to ask you to listen carefully. After all, this is the reading of God's holy. It is his inspired and his inerrant word. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 16, the first verse says, Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I want you to listen to those three verses again. Here's the first verse. Rejoice always. Even in the midst of trial and tribulation, we find reason to rejoice. The second thing we are told to do is pray continually. Or another translation says, pray without ceasing. Verse 18 says, and in all things, give thanks. That's the third thing. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Would you take a moment to bow your heads and close your eyes and would you pray for me as I pray with you. Gracious God, I pray that you would hide me in the shadow of your cross so that these, your people, would hear your voice over mine and so that they might discern the difference between the wisdom of God and the knowledge of a man. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our, your, our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you alone, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Come, Holy Spirit, and just have your way in us and through us and in spite of us. Lord, as we have celebrated, as we have worshipped in scripture, in sermon, in song, 
and now in sermon, and then in sacrament, we find ourselves truly blessed, be numbered among the faithful this day. And God, we thank you most of all for the fact that even when we have been unfaithful, you have always been faithful to us. I pray this in the powerful and the precious and the perfect name of Jesus, who is called the Christ. And let all God's people say, Amen. So here's this. I want to share a story with you today. It was told, it was said, that once upon a time, there was a little village in Europe. And on the outskirts of that little village, there lived a very, very wealthy man. He lived in a mansion. It was said to say, unfortunate though, that perhaps he was as stingy as he was rich. In fact, sometimes the townspeople would come to his door, people who were needy, people who were destitute, and some people who were sick, needing medicine, they asked for assistance. And some people who, who needed clothing would ask for help with that. And, and some people who needed lodging would ask for help with that. And, and, and some people that it, it had various and the sundry concerns, they would come to his door. But the old man, the rich old man who lived in the mansion on the edge of town would have his servants cast him off his property. And then he would stand at the door and shout after them, why don't you go and tell your problem to the cobbler who lives in town? Maybe he can do something for you. Go tell your problems to the, the cobbler because he's one of your kind. After a while, the townspeople, the needy people, began to take the old man's advice and went to the cobbler. And they discovered something about the cobbler. They discovered that though he didn't seem to be abundantly wealthy, he had a heart of gold and was very generous. And so if they were hungry, he would buy them food. If they needed clothing, he would buy them new clothes. If he needed lodging, he would put them up in the inn and so forth. So after a while, the rich old man who lived in the mansion on the edge of town had all the privacy that he wanted. But you see, the townspeople no longer came to his door, only to be cast aside. Well, as time went on, the rich old man who lived in the mansion on the edge of town died, and nobody cared. In fact, there were only two people at his, at his funeral. There was the undertaker and the priest. After a while, the weeds and the, and the briars and the bushes overtook the site of that man's grave. They had buried him in the farthest corner of the graveyard. And after a while, those weeds and, and bushes and, 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 and briars overtook the site of his grave, but, but nobody cared. Well, things were, for the most part, the same as they had always been in the little village. But after a while, the people began to notice the difference about the cobbler. He still seemed to care about their problems, but if they were hungry, he would only give them leftovers. If they needed clothing, he might share some worn out clothing, some secondhand clothing of his own. If they needed lodging, he no longer put them up in the inn. He might put them up in his, in his stable. And so the townspeople noticed this. In fact, they were upset, and they actually confronted him. A group of those townspeople came to that cobbler, and they confronted him. And they said, we fear that you are now no better than the rich old man who used to live in the mansion on the edge of town. The cobbler looked at them, looked at them and he said, you're wrong. You're wrong not only about me, but you're wrong about the rich old man who lived in the mansion on the edge of town. He said, one night under the cover of darkness, that rich old man came to me 
And he said, Cobra, I have a great concern. My heart is breaking for the townspeople, the needy people, the destitute people of our town. And I would like to help. So I will give you a large sum of money. And it should be more than enough for you to, to help them. But if you ever run out of money, I'll give you more. But only on two conditions. You must never, ever, as long as I live, reveal to the townspeople the source of your income, and you must never, ever reveal to them, as long as I live, the identity of their benefactor. On the day that you do, the funds will cease. So ended the cobbler's tale. And immediately the sounds people knew that they had done the rich old man a, a serious injustice. In fact, they went to it as a group and they went to the, the, his gravesite in the graveyard in that farthest corner and they began to clean it up and they cleaned up all those weeds and the, and the, and the bushes and, and, and the briars that had obscured the vision of the, the sight of his grave and, and then they began to plant beautiful flowers and but it was just absolutely beautifully adorned and they continued to do that. And sometimes when travelers would come to that little European village, they would notice that particular gravesite was so beautifully adorned. It was said to be one of the most beautifully adorned of all gravesites in all of Europe. And so they would ask, why is this particular gravesite so beautifully adorned? And then they would hear this story told over and over and over again, kept alive on the tongues and in the hearts and in the minds of the townspeople. In all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let me share a thought with you. It's one thing to be ungrateful when you do not know the identity of your benefactor. In fact, when I was a child, there was a program on television. It was entitled The Millionaire. It had the same kind of thing that that story did. And once, a, once a, in that episode, that millionaire would anonymously help someone who was in need. It's one thing to be ungrateful when the identity of our benefactor has been concealed. But it's another matter all together to be ungrateful when we know the identity of, a, of, the, of our benefactor all along. God is the world's greatest benefactor. In fact, Jesus said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave. He's the world's greatest benefactor. Every good and perfect gift we are told in the scripture comes down from the Father of lights. Every good and perfect gift, including the gift of salvation, in, including the gift of heaven, in, including the gift of his great, gracious son, Jesus Christ. God could have done anything to save the world. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of all glory. He is the creator of all the universes. God could have given a planet. He could have given the moon and the stars as a ransom for the sins of men, but he didn't. God gave the very best, the pure, perfect son, his pure, perfect son called Jesus. In all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I want to pray with you for just a moment. As we do, let us approach this segment with, with the thanksgiving and also with gratitude to the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of all glory. Let's pray for just a moment. Father God, in the precious and priceless and perfect name of Jesus, we come to express our gratitude to you for giving not what was left over and not giving second best, but giving the best of all, your son Jesus Christ and the gift of salvation and the gift of eternal life. 
Father God, I thank you so much for your grace and your love and your mercy. And I praise you in the priceless and perfect name of your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we, as we want to invite you to share with us in the sacrament of Holy Communion, I remind you that in the United Methodist Church, you do not have to be a member of the United Methodist Church to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion with us. Um, uh, you're welcome um, to share in the sacrament. You do not, again, have to be a member of the Methodist Church or the United, uh, Epworth United Methodist Church. We simply ask that you respond to the invitation that I will give you now. Hear now the invitation to Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We've broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now we turn to the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give praise to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks, our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, his death and his resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and of the Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took, took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit us gathered here, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite those who are here now on the um, and our support staff to come, and, and, and they're going to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion to do well, with you today as you will at home.
First we'll take the, the bread and we take the bread in remembrance of what Jesus said when he took the bread. He gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And now we receive the grape juice. We remember again what Jesus said to his disciples that night. Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As we turn to you in prayer, Lord Jesus, we are reminded of those, those words that comfort us in the scripture. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that God first loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, who is Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. As you go, go in peace, knowing that as you made good and earnest confession, your sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. Amen. We're going to continue our worship service as we close in song. And as as, um, as our brother Kevin and sister Christina come to, to share with us in our closing hymn, which will be a, a song that uh, uh, we've sung for all of my life in the church, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. I just want to offer an invitation to you today. Maybe you've never reached out in simple childlike faith and asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart to be the Lord of your life and the Savior of your soul. I want to ask you a question. If not before, why not now? If you haven't done it somewhere, why not here today, wherever you are? You see, our God is a wonderful God, and our God is everywhere. There's nowhere we can go from his spirit. The psalmist asked that question, where can I go from your spirit? And there's nowhere we can go away from God's spirit. And where you are, let it be an altar. Let it be an altar where you give your life to Christ. Just in simple childlike prayer, a simple childlike prayer of faith. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are God's son. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose again that I might have eternal life. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I give all that I know about myself to all that I know about you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. I turn to you, Lord Jesus, and in simple childlike faith, I accept you as the Lord of my life and the Savior of my soul. And Lord, I thank you for loving me and I thank you for saving me. And God, give me the courage to share with somebody today that I have made that decision to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and no turning back, no turning back. Give me the courage to share some with someone else today that I have received, God, received God's gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ, and to share it with others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. We're going to close out now in song, and then we'll have a benediction. Would you join me in our closing hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Well, you receive now a benediction. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and, and to present you without fault before the presence of his glory with exceeding gladness. To the only wise God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forevermore. And let all God's people say, Amen.